Morning guys, welcome back to the channel. This morning is Monday the 8th of July. I'm just doing a bit of spinning for bass this morning. Um, I've just got down, I'm at Weybourne Beach. Yeah, it's the first time I've been spinning for bass this far north uh, on the shingle. So we'll see what it does. I hear there's a few bass coming out, but it's obviously picking the times and the weather conditions. Uh, 8th of July, it's shocking in it. What a shocking summer, well start to the summer, it's done nothing but rain, temperatures not even got out of the mid-teens, so it's only 10 degrees now, it's 25 past 4 in the morning, I'm running a little bit late, I just couldn't get my butt out of bed this morning, um, it's low tide this morning at half past 3, I wanted to get down there at low tide, but uh, it is what it is, um, so without further ado, I'll get the gear out of the car, Okay, grab the rod and we'll get down there. Right, let's have a see where we are. Right, left or right? We'll go down to, and then we'll go left. Ugh. Okay, I'm just starting with a 30 gram Suzuka in candy, candy head. Okay guys, quarter past five, we've had a bloody disaster start, second cast, my fault, I switched the spools over, I thought it was a deep spool, it was a shallow spool, and I hadn't tied it on, second cast, chucked out, spooled me out, lost a lot, so, I was absolutely fuming, brand new law, eight quid, gone, and the line, 
But um, I re-rigged and I put the 20 pound floral mats all the way through. So that's what I've got. I'm just sorting out a few uh, laws so I can keep it in my bag and that's what I'm going to stick with today. I'm not going to go too mad in and out of my bag every day, every five minutes changing different laws. But I can see plenty of fish busting and when I cast the law out there's loads of little fry jumping all over the surface. There's a guy on his kayak out there, plenty of birds following him, but I'll just show you what I've got. Okay, basically I'm just put on a 32 gram <coughs> mackerel toby law to start with. I've got one sand eel, 28 gram, that's in just sand eel colour. A couple of wedges, a couple of little metals. The Savage Gear Ultra Realistic Sand Eel, 28 gram. I've got a Suzuka Shallow Diver Law, 32 gram. So I'll be giving that a go in a minute. <clears throat> I've got a couple of these Dennett Herons. I've got 40 gram there, 32 gram, and a 28 gram. One medium diving uh, Heron Shad. Slightly deeper diving one in this one. Uh, a fan of Pachenko's. I stupidly put them in a box. Um, so I've got one in Blanc and one charter back. So if I see anything busting, I'll give the uh, these a go. So I'm just going to start with the 32 gram Toby Mackle Law. Flashes nicely. And that's basically what I've got. Right, so without further ado, let's get casting. I'm going to go to the right, I think. Something to say, go to the right. I have a lot of birds following him out there. I think they're uh, a little bit too far out for me. Unless he's pulling his crab pots, I think, by the look of it. Well, I'm going to give this a go. Suzuka. It's one and a half to two metre diving. 30 gram. We'll give it a go.
Okay, I'm going to try the Pachenko. There's plenty of little bait. There's plenty of little bait fish busting. Well, it looks the business. Come here. Come and get my pachenko. Cheers, guys. Okay guys, we're just stopping for a coffee. I'm sticking with the Pachenkos, but I'll show you what I've been up to in the week. Um, I sorted out all my mackerel feather rigs and my bass feather rigs and all the rest of it. And I've just been sort of like making them up over the last two or three years. But they weren't all standardised, they were all different with different clips and swivels and snap links and this, that and the other. Different lengths. So I thought what I'd do is just standardise everything. Just make everything exactly the same so they did it a one arm's length which is just under four foot i think it was about three foot eight three foot ten i put a swivel on one end a swivel on the bottom with a, a mini snap link and i'll just show you and then for what rather than being on the plastic winders and they're all getting kinked i sort of like stripped them all down put new line on them new hook lengths when necessary and I scratched my head and thought, oh, I've got a load of really heavy duty pipe lagging in the shed. I'll go and get that and put them on that and I'll just show you them. So I made up two of these. They've got all my rigs on. These are more sort of like shrimp rigs and I've got two pins, one for the bottom, one for the top. They're all exactly the same length. These are more my feather rigs. There's about one, two, three, four, five. There's about eight rigs on each one. It weighs absolutely nothing. It's just pipe lagging. It stops the line getting kinked. I say they're all exactly standardised. They're all exactly the same length. Exactly the same swivels and clips on every one. So it just makes things so much quicker, easier. I've got to root through everything. I've got to undo all the bloody packaging and and why no, I just know exactly what there is. I can just grab them and they're ready to go. It's going to make things a lot... I might actually, I've got some bombs with me today, a one and three quarter ounce and a two ounce bomb. I might give them a bit try later on. Yeah, he's dropping his crab pots. He's dropped two. And there's another one bomb. Not down long, he's been backwards and forwards all morning. Unless he's got a couple of lines out there. What's fine? What's left is right. Chasing stars and holding you. Six. I can't see the end, but we'll see it through. Fantastic day. Well, I'm going to give this a go.
There's not a lot of difference, just the colour. I'm just going to try a steady retrieve and see if that does anything. Just going to let the law do its thing. Try faster the train. If I could get down to the bloody shore a bit more, I could get that just under the surface. And actually see this one a lot more, a lot more. Just come back here out of the waves. <clears throat> right guys, I've done what I said I wasn't going to do. Well, it's on the flood and it's mucking up quite a lot. So I've just put um, one and three quarter ounce bomb on and a string of feathers. I was just having a look at my last few videos or when I caught some bass and it was on this rig so you never know there might even be a chance of a mackerel <laughs> <laughs> yeah that would be a thing well it's July <laughs> oh my god did you <laughs> I'm going to have to keep walking down to the right. Yeah, water's mucking up a lot. people down there spinning as well it's so quick and easy now with this uh, new system for the 
feathers and that. Measured every single rig out. Cut them all to size. Right, let's get down here. Standardise the linkage. Cut them down and made them a bit shorter because uh, just for casting and I've gone down to a 10 foot rod so I'll give it half an hour of this, and if not, I'll go back on the laws. Well, I've got heavier leads, but I'll stick with one and three quarters. One thing I'm going to do as soon as I get home I find the deep spool, this is the shallow spool, I need the deep spool, I'm going to load it up the 40 pound braid straight through and then put the leader on tied on it at a minute I can feel that bomb just bouncing across the bottom nicely. Hey, what do, guys? All right? I'm just stopping for five, ten minutes. Grab a breather, have a coffee. Scratch the old nugget. So I'm going to go on the Fox and the Pro. Drop that in close. Work it along the bottom. Can't see many birds working at all today. Seen one or two turns. What you guys been up to? Anything? You been out on the rivers at all? Anyone got on the beach? That is all going. I've had no plans today. Had a lazy day yesterday. I finished work. I'm off for nine days now. And uh, had a fair few bevies Saturday night. Watched the footy. And just did some computer stuff and tidying up yesterday. And I had no plans even when I went to bed. Uh, I set my alarm early for three o'clock. I laid there till about quarter past three and I kicked my ass out of bed. I thought I'd come down here. It was over this. Well, what I was going to do, because the weather's been pants and it's still been in the teens, do a little bit of spinning pike on the rivers. The water temperature should be just about low enough. 
It hasn't been hot at all. It's been 13 degrees, 14 all week. Um, rain and all the rest of it. But I'm going to get back today. I'm going to say have a word with Julian. See if he's out digging for worms. I'll have a session along the coast. With my normal gear, beach fishing. And then I'm going to start, when I get back today, get some hemp and tears in soak. Sort some ground bait out, get to the tackle shop, get some maggots, casters. Um, my wormeries are coming on fantastic. I keep keeping all the bits from work, all the off cuts of tomatoes, cucumbers, melon. There's absolutely thousands in there, it's alive, both, both of them absolutely. And it, you have to just take the lid off and then just, I can get thousands of them, red worms and dendrobinas. So I'll start hitting the rivers this week. Hopefully tomorrow if the weather's decent, if not Wednesday and get out early and get back before the footy. So come on you England. I fancy it against Holland. I fancy England against Holland. I was a bit dubious against Switzerland. Um, we managed to get through. Just. <laughs> uh, never good when it goes to penalty shootouts, is it? It's always nail biting, but five cracking penalties. The young lads stood up well. Uh, proud of them, so next challenge Holland I think we'll beat Holland I think it'll be close 2-1 uh, still not clean on Kane up front I think there are other players available but we'll see at the end of the day it's, um, if he gets us to the final and we win it no one's going to complain are they <laughs> so it's not going to be the most attractive for football at times and uh, be frustrating but we're getting the wins and no one cares and that's what it's about really I mean it's like City or anybody else who wins the league it's them horrible games you've got to win regardless you know just scratch you know you might play awful you might not have the you know a couple of injuries and that but as long as you scratch a win out and that's all that matters at the end of the day so no one will be complaining when we get to the final and win but uh, I ain't going to go much further I'm going to go a little bit further to the right down to Kelling. Now I know that it's, um, it's not going to come any higher than this really, when have got another half an hour before it's high tide. And then I'll probably uh, start working my way back. And depending on what time I get back to the slipway up there, I might go to the left for a bit. Um, I ideally want to finish about 12 because uh, it's supposed to rain later on this afternoon again. But yeah, it's had some torrential rain the other night Saturday night I think it was Friday night, it was Friday night it started about 8, 9 o'clock it woke, actually woke me up about midnight oh yeah, that was a bit close and uh, for about 4 hours it was like when I was living abroad when you had about 2 or 3 months of boiling hot weather and the heavens just open and it's just a wall of water I just couldn't believe it Never seen it like that. I mean, it never eased. It was just literally a sheet of water for about four hours solid. And that's probably why it's taken so long for it to clear up. I mean, uh, still murky. Anyway, we'll stop waffling and get back fishing. I don't know if that used to be a house looking at the stone wall and that and fence there and obviously someone's garden. Uh, Tile slate roof. <laughs> That's what happens on the North Norfolk coast. All this erosion. Right, let's get back out. Right, well, it's getting warm. I was cold this morning. I'm gonna have to take my jumper off. And I have a couple more casts on the law, uh, feathers and then it's back on the laws. I've just brought this in on the feathers, but anyone know what this is called? It's obviously some kind of seaweed, but it's almost jellyfied, like it's got liquid in it. I've never seen one of them before. Anyone knows what it's called? Let me know.
There's another question for you guys. I was looking at the uh, Pachenkos, if anyone's a bit more experienced than me. They have got two hooks. I made them the, the tail one. But they're quite small lords. Does anyone take... Sorry, I've got to move my bag out of the way. Yeah, you get one or two rogue waves and you've got to be careful. I just managed to grab my bag a minute ago. Yeah, is it worth taking one of the hooks off and just leaving the tail one on? So I find sometimes if the middle middle hook, which is around the belly, the line yet can get caught around it, but is it worth having just one hook on it? I if it, I ever buy laws with three, I always take the middle one off and just leave two on it, but uh, well, is one is one hook enough do you reckon guys? And where would you keep it? The middle or the tail? Or well, at the top of you know. Let me know what you think. Well one last cast is coming off. All right, let's take this off, back on the law. I know the tides are all against me today, and ideally I would want to be fishing the last couple of hours of the ebb to low water. And it is, it is very murky. It's still very murky. Well, that's the first, guys. <laughs> I caught a pair of ball sacks. <laughs> Has anyone ever done that before? Nice pair of dangly balls there. Oh, I am blanked. I don't think I want to handle them, really. On a nice scrotum. Look. I've just gone for the Dennett's Heron Shad, 30 gram. Cast like a bullet. And I've just looked at the tide table. You have to watch this bloody tide today. You get one or two bloody huge waves. Yeah, it's, it's high tide at quarter to nine. So we've got 45 minutes. Yeah, what I was thinking of doing, coming up to high tide, because it's going to be deep, quite close in, and that's why I picked, see what I mean by a couple of big waves. That's why I was starting to panic, I thought high tide was going to be about 12 o'clock, but I thought that no, can't have been, because it was lower at three. So, let's get that out of the way. I moved down the beach, pretty much towards Kellen. There's a lot more swell here and it smells a lot more fishy. It's definitely a kelpy, fishy smell in the air here. And I've noticed a few turns just keep coming along this line and swooping and diving. I can reach it with this uh, law.
But for with it high tide and it's a deep trench down here, there might be a bass close in, so I'll try something on the bottom. Well, I think what I'm going to do is stop for a coffee. I'm going to change my law, take this uh, clip off. I just use that bigger one for the Pachenkos because it's quite hard to get on the, uh, the old ring clip. But I'll probably put on the uh, Fox Sander Pro or something I can work along the bottom, I think. Or a deeper diving shad. I'll go with this. There's a bit of a high tide on it, or strong tide. I don't know if that's going to hold well in the tide. But if not, I'll try the sand eel. <coughs> oh! Excuse me. Well, I've just put on a 42 gram Dexter wedge. It's getting the distance. And I'm just wondering what to choose next, but I'm going to head, start heading back. But what I was thinking is, uh, there's too many laws, too many choices, so many colours and so many voices. If, where, why, what, what law have you got? If there's only one law and you had two options, would you choose the harder soft dog? Westin Shads. Westin Shads. You do get the distance with this. And it keeps the line tight. So I've had a few sort of like mono knots with the wind and that on a lighter law. You've got to work it fairly fast. You can start feeling the rod tip vibrating when it starts pulsing in the water. Too slow and it doesn't really work. Like that, you see the tip. Du -du -du -dum, du -du 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 -dum. You can see it when I get close in. You bitch! Come on! Where is Shirley Bassey?
What am I doing wrong, guys? Well, I what don't I know how wrong? to tell you this, Nigel, but you are shit. Really shit. Been here for stars. <laughs> Getting out of bed at 3 o'clock at the stars. You normally come down here at this time of year and see you live. With bait fish and that and all. It's all washed up on the shingle and all the sprats and the anchovies and everything and it smells like a fish farm. It's uh Nothing at the minute. Low tide this morning, saw one or two tiny little uh, anchovies, tiny little herring, just spuffed him. But literally one or two, and that is it. Doesn't even smell that fishy. No birds working along, no, no birds swooping and diving, nothing. We're in, guys. We're in. Let's get over this back. Yeah. Come on! That's the sea bass. Well, that's a stonker. On the sand hill. It has to be mullered it. What about that footback, boys? Woohoo! Look at the size of that. That is a clonker. Right in close on the sand hill. Ah, what a switch. How to get this weighed. That is heavy. And that's coming home with me. I've got a depth for that. All right. What a switch. I mudded it. Right close in. Look at the size of that. Yeah, guys. Eight and a half pound. Bang on. Absolutely mullered that sand hill. Absolutely mullered it. Yeah, guys, look at this. Eight and a half pound. And look at that for a bass. Easy, tiger. Easy. 32 gram salmon skill ultra realistic sand hill. They absolutely mollied it right close in in the surf. Literally about five yards out of this habit. Right, woohoo! It's been a slow start, but we're off and running now. That's the kitty done all the damage. Literally, right down there. Slow retrieve. I thought it snagged on the rock. It was literally under the rod tip. I was just pausing a couple of times. Speeding it up, slow retrieve.
all done. And it's literally here. Literally there. Oh, I'm sticking with this law. I'm sticking with this law now. Uh. It goes to show. I took it right in close. This is about to pull it out. I thought it was snagged on a stone. I let it pull back. After everything that's happened this morning, I bloody deserve that. The first stupid cast. Put too much line on this. Bloody sir. Put too much line on the spool. Setting cast, big bird's rest. And I've thrashed this water to a foam. I've tried every law. Pachenko's. Feathers. Dexter wedges. Suzuko's. Herring shads, Bennett shads. I think I worked hard for that. And I got my reward. All right, I could carry on to the left. I'll try and slightly quick to retrieve this time and then pause it like I did last time. And as I got on close, I just pulled it along the bottom. All right, let's carry on to the left. Come on! Let's have another one. Ah, you know what? Even if you don't get another one today, I'm stoked! Take a look at this guys, I'm no uh, archaeologist or anything like that. Look at this, that's a tooth. And, take a look at this. Another one here, but if you notice where this rock is, look at all this. Does that look like a skeleton? Or am I just being weird? I mean, it just looks a bit too... Yeah, it runs all the way along, I don't know. It just looks like a big shape of a body to me. Yeah, bloody huge. Or am I just being daft? Hey, what's that look like to you? You can see like... Obviously a tail bit here, I don't know, a back. It runs along here comes down here might be stone I don't know or fossilized whatever it is 
but it just definitely got a shape. It just runs up and then runs down. But that's not stone, it's got a weird sound to it. Well, it's obviously hard, but I just don't know if the there it is. <laughs> Tyrannosaurus rex or something. Diplodocus as they call it now. Not Diplodocus is it? Right. And this one's uh, if it is a stone it's a very odd shape for a stone. An old sea creature, Plethosaurus or something. Right, stop that, let's get back to the bass fishing. <laughs> I want some real alive, alive dinosaurs, like the one I've just had. I uh, just missed one guys. It's absolutely mullered this law. I'll have to get another one on. Absolutely mullered it, right close in in the foam, right close in again. Ah! Oh, let's get another law on, I don't think you can do anything with this. There's a couple of birds started working close in, They're up and down here. It's just been swooping and diving along this line here. Put the webs back on for a minute. I'm just going to go for a real slow retrieve. guys I'm all done I'm all back at the car it's quarter to 11 that's enough for me uh, my arm's starting to give me a bit of jip to tell you the truth and uh, I think that window of opportunity's passed uh, just the one bass but hey I'm more than happy with that if I'm over the bloody moon to tell you the truth I want a stonking bass to get get the season off with and a new PB way smashed my personal best eight and a half pounds so Lost one as well, right at the death. Um, the law was ragged a bit. But I ain't, I ain't complaining. Um, so I thought, well, I, I'm not going to thrash the water to a foam. It's quarter to 11, you know, I've got out here. Whatever it was, 4 r 4 uh, That's long enough for me. Um, swapped to change, kept busy. Kept trying different laws. Uh, Try the Pachenkos, they look brilliant. I think once that water uh, clears up a lot, they'll do the damage. The charter bat look, look stands out really clear in the water. But uh, I know I hear a lot of people have it on the Leblanc, or Matt, as I'm calling him, Matt Leblanc. And uh, yeah, I tried the wedges, uh, tried 30, 40 gram Dennett's, um, Mackle Shads, starting off on the Toby. 35 gram Toby and a mackerel. Uh, they look really biz. They, they flash really well. Um, went through the laws. Suzuko's with shallow diving ones. Oh uh, yeah, and the someone said just go back on the sand ale. Cleaning this um, bass. Um, 
And while I was doing it, the belly was absolutely full. So I thought I'd have a quick look inside the belly, see what it's been eating. And look at that. There's nine sand eels there. And that's why it took the sand eel. Match the hatch. And literally there's about a second cast after going back on the sand eel. Uh, I hadn't put it on all day. Um, so I said, just give it a go. Um, so I knew the bass would take close in. And I literally, I honestly thought I was snagged on a stone or something. It was, it was right close in near in a rod, rod tip. And then all of a sudden, the clutch screamed and it just it kicked into life. And I knew it was a good fish. I knew it was a bloody good fish. The rod was bent double and it was taken in line. Uh, I took the bat wind off a couple of occasions on the run. But, uh, yeah, it would not come up, it would not come up, that would give a hell of a scrap. But, uh, oh, what a day. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. There's banging bass there. So, a quest for bass, done. But not finished. <laughs> we shall be back again. Anyway, right, hope you enjoyed the video. Any questions, leave them below. Any comments, I'll do my best to answer. Let me know your thoughts. Take care, guys. All the best, and I'll see you in another video. Cheerio!